I started this morning's submission by saying it was a mixed bag of emotions. Mm. Um, it's been it's been a tough evening, or tough 24, 18 hours for me since we had to stage the walkout. Um, my phone has been bombarded with messages and and and, and calls. Um, I, I honestly am unable to to respond to them. I, I get the sense that quite a number of people feel let down. Mm. And, and feel that the minority may have betrayed um, a certain feeling. Uh, for me, two things span out of that. First and foremost is the fact that the people of Ghana have more faith and trust in the minority than they do have in their mm. government to protect their wish. And that for me is a very good sign. Mm. That the people are not reposing their trust and faith in the government that's supposed to oversee the activities of state. They rather have trust and faith in the minority. And the second thing that it brings out for me is the fact that as a minority, it, it puts a lot of expectation on our shoulders and, and our actions must be well thought out and calculated. I, I respect the decision of leadership that was taken yesterday. And I'm sure in the video that you played, you saw me impressing on my colleagues, colleagues. to stand up and, and move out with leadership. It was a tough one for leadership. Um, don't forget that we had been attacked by several people for being disruptive, for being violent, for fighting, mm. all because of the emotional attachment that we had as a caucus to ensuring the e-levy did not pass. We still hold the view that technically and legally the e-levy has not passed. Um, yes, I, I, I know and I, I understand and I agree to a large extent with those who say that it shouldn't be in our place to be wanting to go back to the Supreme Court, given the way the Supreme Court has conducted this business in the recent past. However, I think that um, it's up to the Supreme Court to discharge themselves and, 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 and prove themselves yeah. with our writs that has been filed. Look, yes, we had 137. Um, Did you have 137 we, we had or 136? 137 with a question mark hanging over mm -hmm. one. one yeah. Now, leadership had to make the decision. Um, there was an action underway to secure a stay of execution in Cape Coast. Now, leadership had to make that painful and tough decision of risking asking the Honorable James Jachikwesen to come into the chamber. Mm. At a time when we had not completed filing our stay of execution and subjecting him individually as one person to a possible contempt of parliament mm. and contempt of court, court, which would be a criminal thing that would dangle on he alone mm -hmm. and let him go down alone. Or for us to look at the alternative, which would then open all 137 of us to some of the um criticism that we have faced in the past 18 hours i, I support parliament because if it was me i would have expected the caucus to stand with me mm -hmm. and not to put him up for personal jeopardy and so we decided he shouldn't enter the chamber that reduced our numbers to 136. okay the mpp on the other side has 138 when they deal with the the, the independent candidate without honorable adwasafo they had 137. Mm. So even at that position, you had 137 to 136. Now, the 137, there was the question mark of, of whether or not the ambulance had the uh, chieftaincy minister. minister. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the information that was available to us as a caucus, not just leadership, was that he was in the, in, in, in the ambulance. Yeah, okay. Now, people say, well, he wasn't in the ambulance at the time we walked out. When it comes to the vote... There's first and foremost a voice vote, after which there is going to have been a head count. He would only have been needed to be wheeled in for two minutes when it was his turn to take his vote, mm -hmm. vote and go out. Mm. So you didn't want to take that risk of having a legitimate vote taken and then he being brought in and giving them the 137 and you having your 136. Okay. And so minority leadership had to take that decision. And it wasn't just a decision they took alone. It was a decision taken in consultation with the party. Let's yeah. state this for the records. This was not just MPs going rogue on their own. Yeah. Um, because the, part, the parliamentary wing is a part of the party. We're not an independent wing. And so 
we hold the view that giving the Supreme Court ruling in in Justice Abdullah versus the Attorney General, and yeah. Kabila has the ruling on page 19, mm. the, the Supreme Court is quite clear and explicit in, 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 in what is the interpretation of Article 104 of the Constitution is. And um, at here, this is what it, it says. Um, it says that there is a second current provision found in Article 1041. This provision applies specifically and exclusively to voting to determine a matter in Parliament. Article 1041 provides as follows, except as otherwise provided in this constitution, matters in Parliament shall be determined by the votes of the majority of members present and voting with at least half of all the members of Parliament present. Now, the question is, why didn't you stay in and vote? Mm -hmm. If we had stayed in, you would have had the requirement in 104, which is with at least half yeah. of all the members of parliament present. And if you read the Supreme Court, if you take the Supreme Court ruling, if your cameras could even pan in, you see that they're with at least half of all members of parliament present is highlighted mm. in both by the Supreme Court. Mm. Because they are lifting that from the... From the, from no, the no, I mean, they quote the whole yeah. provision yeah. from the constitution, but that particular okay. line is even given, highlighted. is highlighted and made bolder. Okay. If you can because, just point it to the camera. Uh, yes, they say, I, yeah. I, I, I have it on the camera. I, I don't know if, yes. Yeah. So okay. you see, with at least half, that, that bit over there is, yeah. is bolder than the rest of the, the, the quotes. Okay. So it tells you how critical having half of all members of parliament, and half of all members of parliament will be 137.5, which is what you round off to 138. 138 yeah. Good. Now, if we had stayed in the chamber, you'd have had this requirement met mm -hmm. and then whatever would have happened because some of us were of the school of thought that stay and vote and then express your displeasure by moving out mm. but then you would have legitimized the vote and the whole case would have been lost now what you have done is similar to what the mpp did on the 30th of november mm. when we, we 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 said we were rejecting the budget their claim was that we were 137 yeah and because we did not meet this critical half our actions were illegal and they purported to come back the next Tuesday with the deputy speaker presiding and overturn that, 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 that decision of parliament. The Supreme Court seems to have, have agreed with them yeah. in his ruling. The Supreme Court agreed with them in that mm. ruling. So what we have established as well is that that's why we've gone to the Supreme Court to say to the Supreme Court, you just told us this on the 9th of March, that you agreed with the position of the minority of the majority, the majority when they claimed that the actions of the minority in disapproving <laughs> or rejecting the budget was not constitutional because we didn't have more than one half of members present and voting voting quorum mm -hmm. yesterday if you had only 136 or 130 at the time yeah at the time the question was put because Adressa Fo was not present, the, 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 Chief the chieftaincy minister, minister was not was present. Not. It's possible that there were other members who were not even present because at the time I was walking through the corridor after the, another time the question had been put, Carlos Ahinkra was now coming into the chamber. So okay. again, at the time that question was put, Carlos was not in the chamber. Mm. So it then but the question was put while you were walking out and so you, you still had your chamber. numbers in no, the chamber, did no. you not? <laughs> Fantastic, I'm happy you've raised this. Now let me tell you what. Voting in Parliament, when you vote in Parliament, a member must be in his seat to take part in the vote, not on the floor. You must be in your seat. Now, again, do not forget that in, before we rose and left, the minority leader in wrapping up three times, if you play his submission, mm. three times made it clear to the speaker that all 137 members of the minority will not be part of this proceedings. Now, there's, there's antecedents to this. Mm -hmm. In 2009... When the STX motion was put before Parliament, mm. then Minority Leader Osei Chairman Sambunsu indicated that all minority members were going to walk out and not be part of the STX motion vote. The then Minority Chief Whip Frederick Oparianza sat in the chamber. In his case, when the whole minority walked out, he sat in the chamber yeah. and he sat in the chamber to do one thing: to raise the issue of quorum. When he rose to catch the eye of the speaker he was challenged by the, de the, the, the then majority whip mm. Alfred Agbesi that he has no locus in, in the chamber because his leader had indicated that the caucus the leader did not say I he said the caucus was walking out of the chamber and not okay. going to be part of the proceedings there have been times PC Apia Ofori refused to walk out with the MPP group in parliament but he was not recognized by the speaker because once your leader 
indicates to the person presiding mm. that that caucus is moving out. No member of the caucus remaining has any valid reason or would be recognized by the speaker. So they cannot be counted individually? You, no, because your leader has said 137. Play Honorable Haruna. He said yeah. all 137 members. Are, and I'm making it clear, I'm leading my side. I'll, we will not take part in further proceedings. Okay. So that's the question he made. Now, even to, to, to make that case even more mundane and moot, the argument they are making, what question did they claim was put? The question on the motion for second reading. Mm. That was a question that was put. At the time, they claimed that there were about five members of the minority in there. Okay, fine. If, if there were five members and you even want to grant for the purposes of this conversation that they were present, mm -hmm. the subsequent actions that were taken, the clause-by-clause -clause amendment decisions that were made, was there any member there? Did they have the 138 in the chamber? The third reading, which is the critical approval stage, mm -hmm. when that question was put, were there 137 members, 138 members in there? So you realize that they really have no case to make. This whole argument about whether there were people still in the chamber, it wasn't, that wasn't the final question. There were at least four or five other questions put. There were amendments that were filed. Okay. There was a third consideration stage that went through. Did they have members? Did they have 138? Those are the critical questions the Supreme Court will have to examine and determine. Okay. For those who may feel hurt, I understand and I appreciate your hurt. And I can only tell you one thing. You've trusted the minority. You've trusted the MPs. We have kept faith with you. And, and I think that if there's anyone to feel the ire of the people, anyone to face the brunt of the anger of the people, it is President Akufuado and his finance minister and the majority MPs who introduced the E-Levy. And, and not and you, because you had assured Ghanaians that you were going to Bella, fight to the end and we fought, to ensure we, we, that E-Levy is not passed. We in have this fought, case, E-Levy has been we passed. We have fought to the end and we are still fighting because as far as we're concerned, this battle is not over. You walked still, out and Ghanaians yes, are saying not, that... That so, was not good enough. You should have stayed and fought. Staying, staying to fight would have brought finality to the matter yesterday. The matter is not final. The matter has gone, is going to, has gone to the Supreme Court. A writ has been filed. So it means that the minority is still fighting. Why this are we Supreme not... Court, why, why, why are, are we... Judgment? So it's up to the Supreme Court to distinguish themselves. But you the don't Supreme trust Court, in their judgment. The why are you going back to the same people so, that so, you don't trust? Uh, so, Bella, what are you saying? I mean, we have our issues with the Supreme Court. Yes, mm -hmm. we wouldn't run away from it. Okay, I still think that this ruling of the Supreme Court is absurd. But you're lying, coating, lying, lying you're and coating that is why, me. And that is why we are going back to them on the strength of the absurdity of their ruling for them to see the quagmire they've thrown this country into. And to give them an opportunity to extricate themselves okay. from the absurdity they have, they have plunged this country into. You okay. understand me? And so, for me, let no one, Land on let, this yes, me, please. let no one shift responsibility. This bill, this, this E-Levy, was not introduced by the NDC. It is not the NDC's making. Mm. We must blame the persons who are responsible for this obnoxious bill. It is the NPP and the NDC. And yesterday, when the bill was passed, mm -hmm. when they claimed they had passed it, mm, you saw the faces of the NPP MPs. Why were they celebrating? You saw how they looked like people who, 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 had, who had just been told about the death of their mother. They, they failed, they, they, because even the MPP MPs in parliament tell us the difficulties they are going to face with the passage of this bill. What are the difficulties? Oh, their constituents are waiting for them. Okay. Their constituents told them they didn't want it. Let me bring Charles. Well, your constituents were told as well that you would fight to the end. And, and I you failed your we constituents. Are, no, that's I did what your constituents fail. say. I disagree with you when you say I failed my constituents. That's what your constituents I, are that's saying. That's what my constituents are what saying. What are they saying? My did you constituents read the messages the even on social media? And that's what I'm saying. People are fine. It's fine for people to express their difficulties and challenges. It is my responsibility and the responsibility of the minority to explain the strategy of what we've done. And that's what I've okay. done here. All to right. say that the, the battle is not over. It's moved to the courts. We're asking the Supreme Court to distinguish itself on the basis of what it said. Right. How many days ago? Today is what, 30th? So 21 days week. ago. Okay. 21, 21 days ago. He said okay. that on the night. Oh, that's come by, by so fast. Yes. Okay. Three okay. weeks ago. Exactly Let me bring three Charles weeks in. ago. Let me bring Charles in.